Hello everybody and welcome to my channel today. Today we are going to be cooking with ChatGPT, specifically making a recipe it created for a healthy banana pudding. And I mean, I don't know if we can call it healthy for real, but it's healthier than some banana puddings. Uh, we'll make that and then we'll run through some questions I had for ChatGPT so you can see some of its abilities to provide you information. And then also I'll be pointing out uh, some of the things that ChatGPT got wrong because I did have ChatGPT basically write this entire episode. I did add a few of my own things and I'll make sure to mark that where I have added because I did find some limitations on the things I was asking it to find for me. But anyway, that's, that's a long way of saying we're making banana pudding today that artificial intelligence created or came up with or whatever. Let's get started. First of all, I want to let you know I even created the thumbnail for this video using an image AI system, which was pretty fun and challenging. Here are a couple of the images that it actually gave me and ultimately you see what I came up with. And when it comes to image and uh, AI, we'll be talking about that in another episode because that's been an experience. <laughs> All right, so healthy banana pudding. So what I asked ChatGPT was to write me a pudding recipe from scratch using Nilla wafers and fresh bananas, preferably healthy. And ChatGPT said, here's a healthy recipe for a banana pudding using Nilla wafers. And we're gonna make this and I'm gonna taste this and we'll see how it tastes later, but it's banana pudding. I don't know how it's gonna be bad. Like the, re the, the recipe itself looks sound. Um, yeah, it should be good. Anyway, this is the recipe that ChatGPT gave me with the instructions for the ingredients. Two ripe bananas mashed, two cups unsweetened almond milk, a quarter cup cornstarch, a quarter cup maple syrup, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, a pinch of salt, one cup Nilla wafers crushed, and additional Nilla wafers for the topping. In a medium saucepan, whisk together the almond milk, cornstarch, maple syrup, vanilla extract, and salt until well combined. Heat the mixture over medium heat, stirring constantly until it thickens and comes to a boil, about five to seven minutes. Remove the saucepan from the heat and stir in the mashed bananas until well combined. Place a layer of crushed Nilla wafers at the bottom of a serving dish or in individual jars. Pour half of the pudding mixture over the top of the Nilla wafers. And here's where I'd say, um, Obviously, if you're putting them into smaller individual cups, you're not pouring half in. It's going to be um, portioned out, but you know that. Repeat the layering process with another layer of crushed Nilla wafers and the remaining pudding mix. Top with additional Nilla wafers and refrigerate for about two hours or until set. Enjoy your delicious and healthy banana pudding with Nilla wafers. So that was initially what she gave me. She, I don't know why I'm, gen I don't know why I'm gendering chat GPT. Ugh. <laughs> that's what she, that's what ChatGPT gave me. <laughs> um, I'm going to make it a little later, uh, because my bananas are not quite ripe enough. The thing that she didn't include with this that I wanted to know was how many servings is this recipe? This recipe for banana pudding with Nilla wafers yields approximately six to eight servings, depending on how large or small the portions are. Then I asked ChatGPT if there are any health concerns regarding this recipe. Overall, this banana recipe is relatively healthy and can be part of a balanced diet. However, there are a few health concerns to keep in mind. Added sugar. While this recipe contains no added sugar, it does rely on the natural sweetness of bananas and maple syrup. It's important to keep in mind that even natural sugars can be added up quickly. So it's important to enjoy this recipe in moderation as part of a balanced diet. Now, right off, I don't like what she said because maple syrup is an added sugar. It doesn't matter that it's natural. It's not natural to the ingredient banana. So therefore it is an added sugar, but like that's just a minor thing. 
probably my minor thing. Coconut cream. Coconut cream is high in saturated fat, so it's important to enjoy it in moderation. If you're concerned about the amount of saturated fat in this recipe, you can use a lower fat coconut cream or another non-dairy milk instead. Guess what? Coconut cream is not in that recipe. So I don't know why it decided to put that in there, but that was one error I found. Um, and there, there wasn't that many. And I don't know that it's a big deal, but it's important to note that ChatGPT made this recipe and within two questions, it forgot that there was, you know, it forgot its ingredients. So just be wary of that if you're going to continue, if you're going to ask it a bunch of questions, follow-up questions about the thing that you're making. Back to what ChatGPT had to say. Sodium. This recipe contains some sodium from the Nilla wafers and the pinch of salt added to the pudding. If you're watching your sodium intake, you can use low sodium Nilla wafers and omit the salt or reduce the amount added. Overall, as with any recipe, it's important to enjoy this banana pudding in moderation as part of a balanced diet. If you have any specific health concerns or dietary restrictions, be sure to consult with a healthcare professional or registered dietitian before consuming this recipe. I use a website online to run my dietary stuff, like my recipes through to get the dietary information. So I took this chat GPT recipe and input it into that system. And, um, there were some minor discrepancies, so it, it's not super accurate, but I, I know this is going to be a not popular thing to say um, and probably controversial, but honestly, some of the nutrition information that they've been giving us over these years is not as accurate as it should be or as that we all would assume it is. So just, you know, take that with a grain of salt, unless you're low sodium, and remove that salt. <laughs> Sorry, that's dumb, dumb. It pa it's, pa it's passed a test that I would say, unless you're on a very restricted health diet, then it should be fine. Um, and like I've said, if you are on a restricted diet, um, due to health reasons, you're gonna make sure to talk to your doctor about things like this anyway, so make sure to do that. All right. ChatGPT also says that this recipe is relatively low in calories and fat, and it contains no cholesterol or added sugars. It's also a good source of fiber and provides some essential vitamins and minerals such as vitamin C and potassium. And that comes from the fresh bananas used in the recipe. Keep in mind that these values are approximate and may vary slightly based on the specific ingredients used and the size of the serving. Now, in the event that I didn't have maple syrup, I asked ChatGPT what I could use in place of maple syrup. And ChatGPT says, if you're looking for a healthy substitute for maple syrup in this recipe, you could try using one of the following options, honey, Honey is a natural sweetener that has a lower glycemic index than sugar and contains antioxidants and antibacterial properties. Agave nectar. Agave nectar is a natural sweetener that has a lower glycemic index than sugar and contains vitamins and minerals like calcium, iron, and potassium. Stevia. Stevia is a calorie-free natural sugar that is much sweeter than sugar. It's a good option if you're trying to reduce your sugar intake. And date paste. Date paste is made by blending dates with water until you get a thick syrup-like consistency. It's a natural sweetener that contains fiber, vitamins, and minerals. Keep in mind that each of these sweeteners has a unique flavor profile, so you may need to adjust the amount you use to get the desired level of sweetness in your banana pudding. And because I'm not a huge fan of cornstarch, I asked ChatGPT if there was any substitutions for the cornstarch in this recipe. If you're looking for a healthy substitute for cornstarch in this re recipe, you could try using one of the following options. Arrowroot starch. Arrowroot starch is a gluten-free thickening agent that works well as a substitute for cornstarch. It's made from the root of the arrowroot plant and is a good source of iron and potassium. Tapioca starch. Tapioca starch is another gluten-free thickening agent that can be used in place of cornstarch. It's made from the cassava root and is a good source of carbohydrates. Potato starch. Potato starch is a gluten-free thickening agent that is made from the starch of potatoes. It's a good source of potassium and may be used in a variety of recipes as a substitute for cornstarch. All of these options are healthy substitutes for cornstarch and will work well in this banana pudding recipe. Keep in mind that each of these starches has a slightly different texture, so you may need to experiment a bit to find the one that works best for your recipe. Now, I thought that was, a, that was good information, especially the part where, like, the texture could be impacted. So, so far, ChatGPT is a good cooking partner. Now, if you've watched any of my cooking episodes, you know I love to end with how to store the food you just made. 
And so I asked ChatGPT, how should I store leftovers from this recipe? To store the leftovers of this banana pudding recipe, you should cover the dish tightly with plastic wrap or transfer it to an airtight container, then place it in the refrigerator and store it for up to three to four days. If you have layered the pudding with Nilla wafers, you may notice that they have become slightly soft over time due to the moisture from the pudding. However, the pudding should still be safe to eat as long as it has been stored properly. When you're ready to eat the leftovers, you can serve the pudding cold straight from the refrigerator or let it sit at room temperature for a few minutes to take the chill off. If you find that the pudding has become too thick or stiff after being refrigerated, you can add a little bit of almond milk and stir it gently to loosen it up before serving. I noticed that ChatGPT didn't tell me if I could freeze this recipe at all, so I asked ChatGPT, while it is possible to freeze banana pudding, the texture of the pudding may change and the Nilla wafers may become soggy. If you plan to freeze this recipe, we recommend doing so without the Nilla wafers and adding them as a topping after the pudding has thawed. Here are some steps to freeze the banana pudding. Allow the pudding to cool completely to room temperature. Transfer the pudding to an airtight container or a freeze safe bag. Label the container or bag with the date and contents, then place it in the freezer. To thaw the pudding, transfer the container to the refrigerator and let it thaw for several hours or overnight. Once the pudding is thawed, you can add the crushed Nilla wafers on top before serving. Please keep in mind that the frozen banana pudding may have a different texture than fresh pudding, and the bananas may become slightly mushy after being frozen and thawed. Therefore, we recommend enjoying the pudding fresh or storing it in a refrigerator for up to three to four days. More quality information, very informative. But then I wanted to ask if there was any interesting history behind banana pudding. If you watched, uh, if you watched my cooking videos, you'll know that I love to find out interesting facts and history and things like that about the ingredients or food I might be cooking. So it seemed logical to ask ChatGPT for any information they might have on the history of banana pudding. Yes, there are some interesting history and facts about banana pudding. Banana pudding is a popular Southern dessert that has been around for over a century. The first recorded recipe for banana pudding was published in 1903 in the Kentucky Recipe Book, and it quickly became a staple of Southern cuisine. The origins of banana pudding can be traced back to the use of bananas in the Caribbean, where they were commonly used in puddings and other desserts. This dish then made its way to the American South, where it became a beloved comfort food. Banana pudding is traditionally made with layers of vanilla pudding, sliced bananas, and vanilla wafers, although there are many variations on this recipe. Some versions use homemade custard instead of pudding, while others add whipped cream or meringue on top. Banana pudding has become a popular dessert for potlucks and family gatherings in the South, and many families have their own secret recipes that they have passed down through the generations. In 1999, the state of Tennessee declared banana pudding to be the official state dessert, cementing its place as a beloved Southern classic. Banana pudding has also become a popular flavor for other desserts, such as ice cream, cupcakes, and even cocktails. Overall, banana pudding has a rich history and has become an iconic dessert in Southern cuisine, beloved for its simple, comforting flavors and versatility. Now, I wanted to see how accurate that was, so I went onto the internet, I went to the Wikipedia page for banana pudding, and I'm here to tell you, that page is dry and does not have a lot of information. So then I went to foodandwine.com, where they had an entry on the history of banana pudding. Now this is just a summary, but the main points are here. Banana pudding is a riff on a trifle, a traditional English dessert made with layers of custard, fruit, and sponge that is often topped with whipped cream. Quote, though Americans lay claim to the confection, the fruit isn't native to the land, and we weren't the first to layer its ingredients in such a manner. The first mention of banana pudding, according to an 1878 New York Times column, the first recipe appears to be from an 1888 issue of Good Housekeeping. Now, if you remember, ChatGPT told us it was 1903 in the South, and this site is saying it was the, like, 1888 in the north. So they com there's conflicting information here. Let's keep going. The instructions were make and chill a pint of custard. The recipe instructs then line a pretty dish with alternating layers of sliced sponge cake and sliced bananas. Pour the custard over the layers and top with whipped cream. Sounds like a banana pudding recipe from 1888. So chat GPT was not correct. It'd be interesting to find out why it decided that, um, that banana pudding had the history that it did. 
The interesting thing that took place with banana pudding is the introduction of Nabisco's Nilla wafers. Vanilla wafers took the place of sponge cake when, in 1921, the National Biscuit Company, also known as Nabisco, came across a recipe by Mrs. Laura Curley, printed in a local Illinois paper that was growing in popularity. They decided to take advantage of the new recipe and started printing it on vanilla wafer boxes in the 1940s. They officially became vanilla wafers in 1967. Given the earliest iteration of the recipe being linked to Massachusetts, which is where the Good Housekeeping headquarters is, and Central Illinois, it's a mystery why the dessert is linked to the American South. Okay. Next time you see me, hopefully I'll be putting banana pudding in my mouth. All right, I'm here to taste the banana pudding. Now, the reason I didn't make it the day I shot the initial content was that um, my bananas were not ripe. Okay, notes. First of all, uh, the bananas, uh, bananas can be ripened quicker if you put them in a paper bag. As bananas ripen, they release a hormone called ethylene. One of the no one note I wanted to make is the banana pudding does look a little gray and that is because of the almond milk. If you wanted a more white or yellowy looking banana pudding, what you're gonna wanna do is use regular milk. The other note, cornstarch. Be careful not to overcook your cornstarch. Overcooking starches, especially cornstarch, will reverse the thickness and break it down. So make sure you remove the pudding from the stove top between eight and 10 minutes uh, as directed. And then finally, this recipe, like I mentioned, was supposed to be for six to eight servings, and I made four because uh, I don't eat this kind of stuff often and I want double servings of pudding. So what you're gonna see in the serving of that I'm gonna taste is uh, much more than a serving of banana pudding. All right, I'm pretty excited, so let's get to tasting this. I just want you to take a look. So as you can see, it does look a little gray. And then I also decided to garnish it with some chocolate toasted coconut. So let me taste this. Mm. Oh, it tastes like banana pudding. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Awesome, tastes great, it's healthy. So hopefully you learned um, some different ways that you can use ChatGPT in the kitchen. Mm. Oh, so good. I wish I could share it with you. I hope that this video today has inspired you to try to use ChatGPT in one way or another in the kitchen. If you do use ChatGPT, I'd love to hear your experience. Please come back and leave it in the comment section below. Thank you for stopping by my video. Have a wonderful day. Hello, I'm back. Um, there was a few notes that I thought of adding as I was doing the editing for the video, and so I thought I'd pop this in here. I wanted to make sure that I did note that I swapped out the maple syrup for agave syrup. And agave syrup is a little lighter and a little less sweet, and it still turned out to be very, very sweet. As uh, you know, I only made four servings, but definitely six to eight servings is probably the better way to go. And actually eight servings is probably ideal because it is very, very sweet. And then one thing I did have noticed with doing some other recipes with uh, the ChatGPT program, it does skew kind of heavy with sugar. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. And remember when you find recipes online that aren't created by ChatGPT, they're just as finicky as those created by ChatGPT. So don't let that dissuade you from trying to use the program. It's really fun to try to tailor a recipe. The other thing I wanted to make sure to point out is that yes, I am aware that ChatGPT has some issues with information it provides. 
And as I say to everybody, it's in the beta. It says there right on the open page of the terminal that you should be careful that it can provide incorrect information. I will be talking about this more as time goes on, um, but don't, uh, don't let that dissuade you from using the program either. As you remember in the video, I got some history and in facts about the pudding and it turned out it wasn't completely correct. However, the information provided was correct other than the fact that ChatGPT thought that the Kentucky cookbook was the first recorded recipe, which obviously it was not based on my own research. Anyway, I just wanted to say those couple things and I think as I continue to do more videos on AI, there might be things at the end like this quite often, just because things change in the AI space a lot. And also as I continue to do more research and learn about all the different AIs, cause there's so many different AIs, I'll be learning more things to convey to you and those will change my opinion probably because that's how things work. As I get more information, my opinions might change. But for now, I am still pro AI if you're using it for the appropriate uses. All right, bye.